Now let's see what's making headlines across Africa. U.S. military officials are assessing whether a drone strike in Somalia killed the leader of the militant group al-Shabaab. The Pentagon said it fired several Hellfire missiles and dropped other munitions on an encampment in southern Somalia. That fire pyre targeted the group's leader, widely known as Gadani. He took responsibility for masterminding the attack on an upscale mall in Nairobi, Kenya last year that killed 67 people. And Ambassador David Shin is the former U.S. ambassador to Ethiopia and Burkina Faso and an international affairs professor at George Washington University. I spoke with him earlier about the airstrike against al-Shabaab. Ambassador Shin, and welcome to Arise America. Thanks so much for sitting down to speak with us. Of course, it's uh, very difficult for anybody, apparently, to get confirmation about whether the head of al-Shabaab, Godeni, is, was actually killed in this airstrike. But if he is confirmed to be dead, how big a blow is this for al-Shabaab? Uh, this would be a significant blow for al-Shabaab, uh, primarily because he was really a one-man leader uh, in that operation. He had arranged or, in fact, uh, caused the, the shura, which is the Somali sort of counterpart to a cabinet, uh, to become dissolved in the last year or so. Normally, the shura would uh, help advise and would be the location for identifying a new leader, need there be one. But he basically pushed it aside, and it, uh, it's my understanding it doesn't exist anymore. So if, in fact, he's no longer around, there could very well be some, uh, some real jockeying for power in al-Shabaab. Someone will come to the fore, but it could be messy. And I wonder how long it might take. We have to remind our viewers that also the U.S. conducted an airstrike earlier this year in January that killed another leader. How sophisticated is this organization that they might be able to regroup uh, and continue in their efforts in some sort of reasonable amount of time? Well, I think the, the organization will continue with its efforts, but if you're leaderless for a period of time, obviously it's going to degrade the ability to carry out uh, whatever acts you are intending to carry out. And I think that's what is likely to happen over the short term until they do get a new leader who is, in fact, accepted by the majority of the other senior people in al-Shabaab. It's just going to put a real question mark over their activities uh, until this is resolved. Uh, again, we're, we're operating on the assumption that Gadani is no longer with us, and we don't know that. But uh, the, the point is, this is significant. Can you sort of, this is a bit of a side, but can you sort of explain why it's difficult to get this confirmation? Is it just because of how much control al-Shabaab has over the area where this airstrike was conducted? I'm not sure whether there's anyone on the ground who can actually make the confirmation. I suspect that's the problem. Uh, I noticed that the Pentagon was saying earlier that there were no Americans on the ground at the point where the operation took place. There may be others on the ground who are, uh, who are reporting uh, back in some fashion to the United States, perhaps through the Somali government. But it's even possible they're not absolutely, uh, you know, capable of confirming that. On the other hand, it may be that, that someone knows and they're just not saying yet. Ambassador, talk to us a little bit about your understanding of the control of al-Shabaab in, in Somalia uh, at this point. Of course, there was a African Union offensive to drive them uh, out of a number of areas away from Mogadishu. How much area are they in control of and what has been the recent trend? Well, in terms of land area, uh, particularly rural areas of south-central Somalia, they still have, they still exercise a fair amount of control over large uh, sections of that uh, territory. They have been pushed out of the lower Juba area, which borders Kenya, by the Kenyan Amazon forces and Somali government forces and related uh, unified mil uh, militia forces. They've also been pushed largely out of uh, Mogadishu area, the greater Mogadishu area. On the other hand, everyone knows that al-Shabaab has operatives that are, in effect, in hiding in Mogadishu, and that's why they can carry out periodic attacks. Uh, in the capital city, as they did several days ago. So it's, it's a kind of a messy situation. They've, uh, they've lost ground, important ground, but they're nowhere near defeated uh, yet. 
And very briefly before I let you go, of course, we'll remember that it was Al-Shabaab that conducted that heinous attack against the Westgate Mall in Kenya, killed seven, 67 people, and that was done in retaliation, uh, it was said, because of Kenyan forces in Somalia fighting against Al-Shabaab. So that brings me to my question. How big a concern is that there will be some sort of retaliatory effort because of this airstrike? Uh, there will probably be an effort to retaliate, but al-Shabaab has been doing that regularly since the Westgate Mall attack. There have been any number of attacks inside Kenya that, that al-Shabaab has been taking credit for. In a few cases, the Kenyan government has denied it was al-Shabaab and said it was some local group. Uh, the problem will be, if, if Godani is no longer with us, uh, it's going to be more difficult to carry out those attacks because the leadership will be lacking. Yeah, well, well, let's hope that is true. We'll have to leave it right there for now. Former Ambassador David Shin, thank you, sir. We do appreciate it. My pleasure.